Hi everyone, Daniel Carbiel here from Daniel Carbiel Music, my YouTube channel. I just wanted to make a quick little segment today to talk about just some things that I've come across that I think my uh, fellow musician and drummers um, could really benefit from. Um, this is basically stuff that's kind of new technology wise, new things that are, are kind of being utilized in music that as your musicians, contemporary musicians, we really don't want to fall behind on that. These are just some things that, that I think drummers could really implement into their practice, into their playing, into their recording. Basically, first thing that I think every single drummer should at least try is open up an audio workstation, you know, whether it be Pro Tools, whether it be Cubase, Fruity Loops even, something that you can sequence beats. And just try your hand at sequencing a beat. Um, Logic Pro 10 or Logic Pro X just came out, I think, today or yesterday. I used Logic Pro 8 back when I was um, running a Logic system, and it's a really user-friendly way to just basically sequence things up. And you don't even have to have much of an understanding of how a workstation works, how MIDI flow works, how signal flow through your workstation works. It kind of does a lot of that for you. And it comes with a lot of great virtual instruments. I think that can be beneficial for drummers for pretty much this one reason, that it, it shows you that you have these beats in your head and you know what they look like, as well as what they sound like. And that really allows you to kind of, I think, work backwards as well with, you know, doing beats that you might not actually know how to play, you know, or drum grooves or percussion grooves or fills or anything that you might actually not know how to play on the physical drum kit. But you sequence them up, you have the conceptual idea of what they're doing. And because you have that laid out already, then you can take that idea to a kit. Um, and I think it just opens up a horizon of things that you might not have thought were possible beforehand on your instrument without actually composing it out first. And a couple of great examples of people who do this, DC Wonder is a local Boston-based band. Um, Gene especially, he's singing and playing guitar in that band now, but he comes from a drumming background. On their recordings, it's all MIDI sequence drumming. And the thing that you can tell is because this comes from people who understand drumming and because this comes from people who understand music as a whole, the sequences that they pull off actually feel organic. You know, and I think that can be a lot of the same vibe as a lot of Maroon 5's more recent stuff where it's less acoustic drumming and more sample loop based, but it still has that acoustic drumming feel and I think that's because a drummer was involved in actually making that happen. Second thing I think really that that drummers could benefit by doing, learn how to record yourself. Even if you get a really cheap setup, I know you can get an, a little M Audio, it's, it's a, I think a four track, I'm, I'm not sure what it's called, but you can get that, that comes with Pro Tools M Powered, and a couple of overhead mics, kick and snare, and record yourself and listen back, unadulterated, see what it sounds like. A lot of drummers I find, they only go into studios, they only work with producers. They go in there and do what they do and the drum track comes out sounding perfect. And they may or may not realize that a lot of that has to do with processing, with you know processes like Beat Detective, which basically cuts up all your hits and quantizes them with varying strength, of course, to a grid. Elastic Audio, which stretches around the timing. So all of these tools you can actually use to simulate an acoustic drum performance, which happens in the industry. And I produce music and I engineer and I, I do all of these things because that's kind of the sound for a lot of pop, a lot of contemporary rock, dance music that might utilize acoustic instruments. It's very, very on the beat and doesn't really go away from that. If as a drummer you can actually hear yourself back raw and say, okay, maybe I need to start doing this, that, or the other thing um, so that I don't have to be so heavily edited to sound the way that I want to sound. I think that would be beneficial for a lot of people and really eye-opening. The third and final thing, which I think is an extension of the whole recording yourself atmosphere, is basically learn how to edit yourself so that when you do go into a studio and you are being edited, 
You know what's going on. You know what's possible. You know what's not possible. Fiddle around with, you know, in Logic, they have editing features where you can slice up your hits and move them around and quantize them. Pro Tools has, a, has Beat Detective, as I said, which is great. I'm sure Cubase has a function that's similar, or you can do manual editing. Basically, try that, because I think that will clarify a lot of, at least as far as studio performance, a lot of the things that you might want to work on and bring out more in your playing. That's basically all I kind of wanted to say for today. If any drummers have any questions on specific things that they can do to help enhance their, their performing, their writing, their recording process, feel free to message me or feel free to leave a comment. I'll get back to it as soon as I can and I will make a video if appropriate. Thanks for checking it out and I hope you learned something.